There is an ongoing perversion of what love is in our societies today. Love has been reduced to nothing more than pleasure and lust. Without a proper understanding of what love truly is, we are going to confuse love with lust. What is lust? Lust is an evil desire for things which goes against God's agenda for mankind. We must not confuse lust with weakness. When weakness, weakness is what? Is an, a lack of self-control. A lack of self-control to things that you do not want to do. Whereas loss is voluntarily having a desire, an evil desire for things which goes against God's agenda for mankind. When the spirit of lust enters you, it causes you to go against principles and institutions laid down by God. They that dwell in lust dwell not in God, for they have come under the spell of the spirit of lust. When the spirit of lust enters you, it causes you to do things which goes against the very word of God. It causes you to consciously reject what the word of God has said. It manipulates your spirit to give in to your desire instead of submitting to the eternal word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away. What you are lusting over today will pass away. But God's word will remain the same yesterday, today, and forever. Take note. God will not change his word to accommodate your desires. God will not change his word to accommodate your desires. Because God's word is his nature. If God changes his word, each time the wind blows, the winds of popularity blows, that is when the wind of conservatism blows, when the wind of liberalism blows, God changes his word, he is not going to be God. For him to be God, his word must remain eternal, unchanging truth. Otherwise, he cannot be the righteous God, the righteous judge that he is from generations to generations. If God changed his word, from generation to generations, how then is he going to be able to judge righteously every generation which has existed on earth? God Almighty will not change his way to accommodate your desires. What then is love? The Bible says, God is love. Those that dwell in love abide in God and God in them. It means that love is a nature of God. So if the love that you are professing to someone or to something goes against the nature of God, goes against the word of God, what you have is not love, but lust. 
lust, and evil desire for things which goes against God's agenda for mankind. Since God is love, it means the love that you possess must spring forth the nature of God. It must be aligned with God's agenda for mankind. Where does your love come from? What kind of love do you possess? Is your love from God? Or your love is from this world? The love from God is pure, genuine, authentic. It is sufficient in itself. Those who have God's love, we have God's nature. Oftentimes, we do hear people say that love is not enough in a marriage. We hear people say that you need more than love in a marriage. Are you saying that God is not enough in a marriage? The Bible says that God is love. Are you saying God is not enough in your marriage? This is why, this is because people, they have reduced love to nothing more than pleasure, to nothing more than affection. Others will say that you need a partner who is patient a partner who is kind, but all they are doing is referring back to love. Because if you know what love truly is, you will know that love is enough. What does the Bible tell us about the attributes of love? Let us go to the book of First Corinthians. The book of First Corinthians. We are going to read. Chapter 13, verse 4. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Listen, it says, Love is patient and kind. Can you see? If you are looking for a partner who is patient and kind, the Bible says, Love is patient and kind. So that means all you are looking for is someone who possesses God's love. He says, Love does not envy. Or boast, it is not arrogant or rude, it does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. So, if the person professing love to you does not have all these attributes, it means what he has is not love, but lust. If your father, your mother, your children say they love you, yet they do not possess this attribute, it means the love of the father is not in them. It means what? The love of the Father is not in them. If you are praying and you want a change in your situation, but yet nothing seems to happen, look into your love work. If you are praying to God and you seem not to hear His voice, look into your love work. Because it is love that releases the power of God. A person who does not love 
cannot be entrusted with God's power because he is going to use it, he is going to misuse it, he is going to destroy himself and destroy others. So, though I speak in the tongues of angels, yet I do not love others, I am only making a noise. This is why you will see some people today speak in tongues morning to night. Yet, the tongues that they speak are not able to release God's power to set them free from the shackles of the enemies, tormenting their soul. If I could prophesy what is going on in your life today, and understand your mysteries or have faith to move mountains but i do not love others i am nothing before god i am nothing before god jesus says on the last day many will say lord lord we pray for people in your name we hid people people were delivered and he will say Get away from me. I do not know you. Because when I was sick, you did not come to visit me in the hospital. When I was poor, you did not give me money. When I was hungry, you did not feed me. When I was thirsty, you did not give me water to drink. So can you see the importance of love? God's kind of love. What kind of law do you have? Examine yourself. What kind of law do you have? God's love is not indifferent to the sufferings of others. It does not rejoice in other people's downfall. It does not hope for other people to fail for it to rejoice. God's love wants you to have what it has. It means there is no competition in God's love. What kind of love do you possess? Are you happy for others when they do well? Or do you murmur? Or, or, or do you envy others when they do well? What kind of love do you have? Just imagine how beautiful this world would have been if people only allowed God to channel his love through them. To channel his love through them to bless others to save others, to heal others, to help others who are in need, those who are suffering from loneliness, those who are suffering from uh, homelessness, those who are on the street. If only humans could allow God to channel his love to them, this world would be a better place. Look into your heart. How many times have you allowed God to act to you? How many times has God sent you to go and give something to somebody and then you began to make plans. Ah, God, I do not have enough. But God, look at me, I don't have enough. Allow God to channel his love through you. And you will see how much of your life will change. I remember when I started this ministry, you can go watch all my clips. I did not start by praying for people. I was there at the prayer mountain. I said, God, I'm not going to leave this mountain unless you give me an assignment. Give me one thing. I was there, I was thinking that, okay, okay, after this prayer, when I, when I come down, I will start prophesying. Demons will be falling left and right. No! As I was praying, God led me to the book of Colossians chapter 3. That was where he came with Christ's own charity. The first assignment God gave me for this ministry is to begin with charity and we began with charity faithful to god there are some things that we do that we do not show on youtube but we are always into charity 
Then, from there, we began to preach. We began to preach God's word. From there, God began to give us, to release one ministry, one by one. It is love in us that enables God to use us. It is love that we have in our hearts for others that causes God to lose us to do his work here on earth. Are you allowing God to channel his love through you? Many today want to go into ministry. They want to serve. The first thing you need to ask yourself, can you allow God to channel his love through you? Are you going to be happy when God begins to use other people in your midst more mightily than you? Are you going to rejoice? Hmm. Are you going to rejoice? It is the lost from this world that is causing the stealing, killing, and destruction that we see today. Take note. It is the lost from this world that is causing the stealing, killing, and destruction that we see in the world today. People kill others out of envy. People they destroy others out of bitterness. People, they poison others out of jealousy. Even in the church today, when you see somebody begin to rise in the church, God begins to use them more mightily than the head pastor. The head pastor becomes jealous and will look for a way to put him down. We have seen it. We have seen it. And then you wonder, why is it that God's power is not common in our midst today? It is because we are not allowing God to channel his love through us. Examine yourself. Are you allowing God to channel his love through you? Are you allowing God to channel his love through you? Most of the problems that we have in the world today is because everyone has decided to follow their own lust. Each one of us. What is your lust? Remember I said lust is an evil desire for things that goes against God's agenda for mankind. The lust you have could be for money. It could be for unnatural relationship. The lust you have, it could be for position, for power. When people are hungry with power, we know what they do. We have seen it when people are hungry for power. Let us go to the book of Romans for us to see exactly what this has done to us. Romans chapter 1. We are going to read from verse 18 to 32. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is made plain to them. God has shown it to them. God is in his word. For his invisible attribute, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. For they are without excuse. You cannot say you don't know God because God is in his word. For although they knew God, they do not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal men and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up in the loss of their heart to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions, 
for their women exchange natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And since they do not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with malice. They are full of envy. They, are, they were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, co covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Can you see? The word of God is truth. This word of God that we just read today was inspired by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible, which makes the Bible infallible. So if you cannot accept the word of God for what it says, therefore you are saying that the Holy Spirit is not omnipotent, is not omnipresent, is not all-knowing. God Almighty will not change his word to accommodate your sinful desires. If you love God, if you want to follow God, Jesus Christ says what? Abandon yourself, deny yourself, reject yourself, carry your cross daily. When you deny yourself, that is, you reject your old nature, that nature that wants to do the things that was being spoken against here in Romans chapter 1, then the enemy will begin to attack you. They will come with all sorts of things to attack you. Those whom you stole with before, those whom you lied with before, those whom you gossiped with before, those whom you did uh, uh, fornications with before, adultery, as it is said here in Romans chapter 1, they will begin to pressure you to go back into it. That is carry your cross. The urge from your past life will begin to what? To pressure you. The enemy will begin to use your past life of sin to condemn you, to persecute you in society. God Almighty will not change his word to accommodate your desire. People do say, uh, God is love, do not judge. His grace is sufficient for us. Should we continue in sin that God's grace should abound? No! God has given us his word for us to know him and to know his nature. If you reject his word, you are equally rejecting him. To the extent you receive God's word is to the extent you will be filled with the light of Christ. To the extent you reject the word of Christ is to the extent you will be filled with a terrifying darkness. What kind of love do you have? Does your love come from God or does it come from this world? As a child of God, I am going to leave you with this. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you will know that which is good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. May the Lord bless his word in your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. So yes, I pray this word is going to transform your mind and it will make you to look deep into yourself, to ask yourself, to probe yourself, what kind of love do I have? Allow God to channel his love through you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, 
Your children have listened to your word. Your word of revelation. Let this word transform their thinking process. Let it transform their life that they will be able to begin to channel your love through them. Oh, Heavenly Father, transform us through your word and by your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.